everyone and welcome to another edition of the nmtv talk show today we are continuing on the topic i titled security and moral failures of our nigerian society and of course this is going to be a series an ongoing now series i'm dr nana this is nmtv new york welcome to the program once again we will start with two famous quotes from our river leaders, Chief Obafemi Awolowo and Aminu Kano, whose words, all their words on that quote are still very much alive today. And we will also look at the role Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, the IBB played in Nigeria. I know many people have different views about of the president, the military president, IBB. But my view of him is really good because I've come to realize all the work that he has done and I've not even seen any comparison in my own view. So we are going to be watching a video of IBB here and hear him talk eloquently. And of course, in that video, you will hear him analyze the situation of things right now and what happened why he was the president of nigeria now talking about the quote chief obafemi awolo and mala aminu kano both leaders could not be wrong at all given the situation of things right now in nigeria many decades after we are seeing that all that is spoke is coming to pass According to Obafemi Awolowo, he quotes, and I quote right now, the children of the poor you fail to train will, not, will never let your children have peace. That is one of his very famous quotes by who? Chief Obafemi Awolowo. Listen to this quote again. He said, the children of the poor you fail to train will never let your children have what? Peace. Think about that quote. Think about the words. Think about the meaning. Look at what is happening today in Nigeria. And Malam Amino Kano also suggested that Nigeria we know no peace or until the son of a nobody can become somebody without knowing anybody just recalibrate just recalibrate just think about this again nigeria we know no peace until the son of a nobody can become somebody without knowing anybody my brothers and sisters, the Nigeria of today, these leaders that spoke these words, have you not all seen that they know exactly, they, are vis they were visionary. They saw everything. And they spoke these words. Today in Nigeria, can you become somebody without knowing nobody, even though you have all the qualities and everything? And if that thing is coming to pass, can't we see that it's a problem? That there's a problem there? According to the leader, Nigeria will not know peace unless things are arranged. Look at what is happening in Nigeria today. Who is safe? Is the big man safe? What the chief of Afemim Awolo was saying, the children you refuse to train, we, we give no rest to your own children. That means if things are not in proper place, what they, where, where they are supposed to be, no one will be safe. Are we going to continue in this trend? Is this what we want the Nigerian to be? 
don't we understand that things are not in the proper place so now we are going to watch a video of babangida you analyze it yourself because in my view that man is a genius there's no evil attached to it during his reign check out his accomplishment and what is happening since after the 28 years after so watch this video 1976 you watched the coup you know against uh, the late Muritala, uh, Muritala Muhammad mm -hmm. and all of you know iconic moments iconic periods uh talk to us about that fight that you had to fight to keep Nigeria warm my people and the fact listen, that today you know, listen Nigeria to is still struggling interview. with the issue of unity well I think uh, at that time don't forget the first problem started in 1960, uh, 1966. Nigeria was six years old as an independent country. Uh, we were just struggling. We were trying to be a nation. We haven't fully become, uh, how do I call it? We are not we are just a group of people in an environment, geographical environment called Nigeria. But we were not, I didn't believe we built a nation. And that is the major problem. That is why there were instability within the country. Um, then this culminated into a civil war. But it still hasn't given closure. I hope you know that Nigerians don't accept know. that. Yeah, Nigerians still want to know what exactly happened. There was talk about a cabal that, you know, figuratively had it gone to your head and forced you to annul June 12. That you yourself are a victim of June 12. You want me to be honest with you? He's talking about June 12th uh, if it annulment, that June 12th election that was annulled. There would have been the MK Abiola election. Time, which could have been violent. That's all I can confirm. It didn't happen. Thanks to the engineering, the Maradonic way we handled you guys in the in the society. But we could that could have given room for more instability in the country to the southeast or the need for it to shift to the southeast well i we we, we have to make a choice either we want to practice democracy the way it should be practiced democracy in our own whims and caprices if we are going to do it the way it is done all over the world, you allow the process to continue, but it is through the process that you will be able to come up with a candidate that will lead the country. His qualifications, his beliefs should be known to Nigerians before somebody ever throws his hat into the into the ring into the ring regardless of where he comes from are you saying regardless that, you of saying, where he comes are from are you saying that nigeria at this time should jettison the idea of zoning or power shifts and all of that whether we do it now or we don't we will have to do it the evil genius <laughs> did you call yourself that no i never oh, did the media did okay and people call him the nigerian people you have to anticipate them. I, if you anticipate them, then you live well with them. And they call me evil. I, I marvel at that. Uh, I said there is a contradiction. You can't be evil and then a genius. So it's for the others or for the Nigerian to decide how this be met. As a Nigerian, would you say, what would you say? I will rather wait and see what the other party, how they react. 
if they convince me that they, they didn't succeed in this and they show me proofs, I will go for them. Um, by the way, what's your relationship like with the current President Mohammed Buhari, considering the fact that... So anybody who wants a position of leadership, you must be a person who will be able to use your intellect for the benefit. If there are things you believe, either in Niger or whatever, and I, I want to lead the state, fine. This is, if you talk about, this is an agricultural state, agrarian state. Mm -hmm. My thought will be how to take advantage of that God-given situation. Yes. To better, to better the well-being of the people. Do you think it's just a lack of understanding of Nigeria and Nigerians that's missing within the leadership or just outright lack of love and care for Nigeria and Nigerians? Isn't that what, you know, is what many are saying with this administration? Nigeria seems to be moving towards uh, a one-party state. Um, talk to us about that. But I know the Nigerians will not allow that to happen. They will make so much noise that whoever will attempt to do that will not do it. This is the good thing about this country. They will talk, they will demonstrate, they will engage you in all sorts of things so as not to do the wrong thing. For example, to the security situation, that Nigeria finds itself in right now. There's banditry, kidnapping, there's terrorism in the Northeast, banditry in the Northwest, a secessionist sentiments in the Southeast, even in the Southwest, secessionist sentiments, banditry also, kidnapping all across the country. What do you think is a fundamental problem? And what is the way out of this vicious cycle of uh, insecurity? I think the problem is leadership. Mm. Leadership. The there is a disconnect between Maybe it's so right. the leadership when we don't have good leadership in the country things are going to be falling apart right now we don't have there any is a disconnect. we've never had one if there is no disconnect when people relate with each other I can't at recollect. various leadership level and talk about the community about the state about the federation Except then we wouldn't have IDB. problem whatsoever there we don't have his core values in the country that everybody depends as all the time. You defend that core value. Mm -hmm. core value. You are a Nigerian. This is what you believe in. And anything short of that, you are not exactly. going to be What are the core values of Nigeria? Mm -hmm. when we as were, a Nigerian, what are the, the core military, values that we talked believe in? We talked about settled issues that about what? Nigeria. The unity of Nigeria, as far as we were concerned, was a settled issue. Uh, presidentialism was a settled issue. Um, market economy, free market, mm -hmm. was a, not, not socialism, was a settled issue. Um, the federation also is a settled issue. Nobody will come and say, I, we, Nigeria is no longer a federation or something. When you say settled, we have to go back to the studio. From the little that we, I took from the clip from the Arise News, I think I'll encourage you to go back to Arise News and watch the full interview. And you will see that Babangida is still together. As we know, IBB was Nigerian well-known military president. Again, military president. He has a lot added to his name. He has done so much. He did a lot for Nigeria. Compared to what is happening now, compared to all the things that the leaders are doing now, in our own very eyes, IBB is a saint. He has so many things attached to his name. He left office since tw about 28 years ago. From the from 28 years ago till now, what is it? How have we moved? How have we moved? I 
Cardi B is a phenomenon. He is indeed a genius without the evil attached to it. So many accomplishments. And he actually asks a very cogent question. He said, what are our Nigerian core values? What do we believe in as Nigerians? What are our core values that we believe in as Nigerians? That you can say, okay, this is our core value as a Nigerian. Think about it. What do we have as core values? What do we believe in? America believes in freedom, equality, and justice. When people are going to fight war, they are fighting for those values that the country believes in. What are the core values that Nigerian believes in that you can you, that you can testify to as a Nigerian? Why do you think people are living in droves? No core value that is being promoted in Nigeria as a Nigerian that you can hold on to. It looks like anything goes. Under IBB regime, he created 11 states, additional 11 states. Remember that. The third mainland bridge, the third mainland bridge was, was, was done by who? Babangida. He was the one that moved the capital from Lagos to where? Abuja. Most of the uh, agencies that he created are still the ones that we're having today in Nigeria that are functioning in Nigeria. IBB has so many things attached to his name. He is the one who created Aqua Ibon State and Castina State in 1987. And in 1991, he created Abia, Enugu, Delta, Jigawa, Kebi, Oshun State, Kogi State, Taraba State, and Yobe State. All of this, IBB created. Evidently, with this additional state he created, those who contributed to the economy of Nigeria one way or the other. Since after he left office, what are the things that we can actually point to, apart from Obasanjo, that brought telecommunication, that a roadside fish seller today can have his own telephone? What is it that you can account to all the other leaders? I'm also going to share a PowerPoint with you. Then you're going to see all the agencies that Babangida actually created that are still functioning today. And many have not been improved on. Imagine that we had good leaders consistently from the time IBB stepped down to date. Nigeria would have moved forward. It's a very big problem because we don't have core values. Because IBB spoke about it even in this interview. What are the core values that Nigeria believes in? There needs to be something attached to that nation that we believe in, that will make people want to die for that nation, that will make people want to stand up for the nation. The politician, what do they believe in? They, they just come and say they want to be president, they want to be governor. What has been their social contribution? What is it that they have been doing for the country? What do they believe in? So let me share the PowerPoint with you. Then you will truly see that IBB is a genius. It's not just a, a regular genius. It's a genius without the evil. He did a whole lot for Nigeria. And we, we are not talking about him enough. We should. I hope you are seeing this. Okay. You're seeing IBB here, security and moral failures of our Nigerian society. And of course, IBB was asking the question, said, what are the core values that Nigerians believe in? Okay, we have uh, our Nigerian flag, green, white, green. What do we believe in? What are the core values that is attached to this, that we're actually practicing? American core values is freedom, Equality, justice, among others. These are the three major ones 
that people will fight and die for here in the U.S. What do we have in Nigeria that we believe in? What do we believe in? The politicians that are coming out and saying that they want to be this, they want to be... What are their values? Do they have Nigerian interests at heart? If they do, why are they siphoning so much money abroad and not creating programs that will benefit the ordinary masses? Why is there so much ritual killings everywhere? Why are the youth being used as people who, who just exist in Nigeria? Now, we are practicing democracy in Nigeria, right? Democracy is the government of the people by the people are for the people. Is that what is happening in Nigeria? It is, is that what is happening in Nigeria? Are people even feeling the impact that they are living in a nation that the government cared for them? We have to start thinking about this. What are Nigerian core values? Some of the research that I saw that Nigerians believe in all of this. Which one is being practiced in Nigeria? Is it the humanity part of it? Dignity, freedom, liberty, and security. Do we have any of these things existing in Nigeria for real that people can think about, can associate with? Listen, IBB created over 45 agencies. Over 45 agencies in Nigeria. Is the one who created the NDLEA. All of these agencies were created by IBB, the SSS. Look at all the agencies, over 45 agencies created by Bangida. So, how many of these are still functioning? Country. If we had other leaders, if we had other leaders that improved on what IBB did, I'm sure we will be better off today. We will have been better off today. Obviously, that has not happened. Everything that has happened since IBB left, the only thing we can point to is the one that Obasa John did. That's the only one we can point to. That is that everyone is able to at least have telephone, even though the data are very expensive. No government has been able to even bring down the cost of data in Nigeria. And now we have so many people parading. I want to become president of Nigeria. Nigerians. You are not going to just start existing. You need to ask questions. You need to start asking your leaders questions. And you need to start coming out to vote. All of these people that are lining up themselves to becoming the next president. What is it that they have been committed to? What have they been doing? If someone like Dan Gote is coming out saying he wants to become president, then we understand. Because he has been source of employment for Nigerians. So if it's somebody like him coming out to want to become a president of Nigeria, that is somebody you can count on. That is somebody you can vote for. But all of these people saying that they want to become president, what have they done? Apart of, uh, uh, some of them, which of course, I think uh, Bola Tinubu did something in Lagos. Because he made Lagos the way it is and all of that. The other ones that are parading themselves coming out, what, what is it that they have done? What is it that they have done? So Nigerians, we need to start asking questions. There's nothing that they did. Jonathan that left the presidency several years ago. Since he left the presidency, what has he been doing that touched ordinary Nigerians? What did he do, Atiku? What has he done that touched ordinary Nigerians? So why are they coming back and saying they want to become president? What are their values? Do they love Nigeria that much? If they do, then they should have changed it, just like IBB did. 
in that interview, I be said, I be said he had he had the value of the military man, loyalty, dignity, and others. He brought all of that to save the country. Most of all of these uh, agencies he created is for the masses. It's for the masses he created them for. Center for Democratic uh, Studies. He's the one who created the presidency. Economic diplomacy. The structural adjustment program. Civil service reform. He, he was the one who created the 36, 136 local government uh, council. You know, free markets. The oil market, he did a whole lot of things. So what I, I expected the Nigerian leader to be doing since then is to add to what IBB has done so far. But now, even the 10 million Maryland bridge that he fixed, I'm sure some part is dilapidated. So Nigeria do not have a roadmap of what it actually takes to even run a, a country, the leaders. So if you want to think of leaders that we should rule Nigeria, you have to go back to that IBB. You have to go and ask him questions on the way forward. He agreed he's an elder statesman. He's not uh, active in any politics or whatsoever. But I think that all of these presidential aspirants need to go and line up and ask questions. Let him up, let him question them and see if there's any one of them that is even fit that love Nigeria. Because I don't know, since Nigeria has become Nigeria 62 years after that we, 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 we gain our independence. 62 years after, there's nothing to write home about it. There's corruption, so much corruption. Uh, there's no security. Economy is completely destroyed. Those are the three things the APC promised. The APC promised three things to root out corruption, to improve uh, economy, and to have security. No, nada. So Nigerian citizens and Nigerian people, we need to think about how we choose our leaders. And Nigerian leaders, the die is cast. You have not done anything warranting you to come back to become another president. So if you have to be a president of that country, you have to start loving the country. You have to show that you even know what you are doing. As it is now, for me, it's a zero mind for any of these candidates. Unless they go and meet even the Babangeda, let him teach them what they should do. Because I can give you 100% that listening to Babangida, because when he was the president, was a military president, I was still very young, but looking at everything that he's done, I have not seen any leader that can match him or that have matched him so far, except Obasanjo, who provided telecommunication for Nigeria. So outside that, I've not seen anything. The other thing they did is to reform the bank so that money can be flowing abroad. But we need a leader who we, who we think about Nigerians. We need a leader who will think about Nigerians. I don't need a leader who will be thinking of how to ship money abroad. We need a leader who will think about Nigerians. We need human capital development in Nigeria. We have to rebuild human capital development in Nigeria. You have to invest in people. We need a leader that is not only about himself and his family once you can send your children abroad then the rest is story we don't need that kind of leader we need a leader who will actually be committed to nigerians and nigeria as a nation who actually love nigeria do things for nigeria that will favor nigerians i hope we are making point in our program and i hope that some of these leaders I will actually go back to the archives of what Babangida did and try to, you know, redo those things. Or go to Babangida and seek advice. I thank you all for watching. I will see you back here again. And I encourage you all to watch the full uh, video.
from Arise News. Interview by Ungozi. Until then, and I will see you back here again. Bye bye. <laughs>